evil lurks in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Now, the Carry Salt Company, producers of salt for every farm and home use, bring you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Today's exciting adventure will begin in just a moment. Now, boys and girls, here's an important announcement. Carrie's special magic shadow ring offer is nearly over. Just one more week and it will end. If there are still some of you who haven't sent for your magic shadow ring, better not wait any longer. It's your last chance to get this wonderful ring that glows in the dark with a weird, mysterious radiance. The ring cannot be bought in any store, you know, but it's so easy to get one from the makers of Cary Salt. I'm sure Mom knows that Cary's is the extra refined salt, the salt that always carries the flavor. Ask her to listen with you later in the program when I tell how to send for... Carrie's Magic Shadow Ring. And now, the shadow. The shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Seance with Death. It is midnight. The door to the bedroom of a large suite in a fashionable midtown apartment, opens. A tall, dignified man enters. Walks over to the telephone next to the bed. He hesitates for a moment. Then, as though reaching a decision, removes the instrument from its hook. Number, please. Uh, get me police headquarters, operator. One moment, please. Huh. Well, what do you want? What do you want? I'm ringing that number, sir. Uh, n never, never mind it now. Uh, look, I, uh, I wasn't going to call the police honest. I, I I'll make a deal with you. I I've got plenty on all of you, but I I'll tear it up. Honest, I will. I... like it, Robbie. Killing Sanders was a bad idea. Faking spooks is one thing, but making real spooks is not good for business. Oh, wait a minute, Swanee. You talk as though I knocked off Sanders. Well, you did, didn't you? No. I didn't have anything to do with it. Oh. Maybe you want me to think Doc killed Sanders. Maybe didn't? I did, Swanee. <clears throat> Doc, I... I did not hear you. No, well, I heard you. I, I, I guess I was just sounding off. Uh, you know how it is. Sure, I know how it is. That's my business, remember? Applied psychiatry and consultant, I know exactly how it is. Sure? Doc can read your mind for you. Huh, Doc? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the police are pretty mad about Sanders being killed, Doc. They said he was killed to keep him from giving some dope to the cops. He was. And the police are no madder than I am, Swami. You tipped our whole business to Sanders. He had enough evidence to break our little game wide open. Yeah. You weren't playing Sanders for a sucker, Swami. He's been playing you. Yeah? How about his daughter? She's still on the hook. But now we're running into a few legal difficulties in procuring the girl's inheritance. Uh, you mean with lawyers? With one lawyer, a man named Jackson. Sanders' personal legal advisor and a very suspicious man. Oh? Uh -huh. We're going to have to give Jackson a spook business, Doc? Right? Jackson is going to be taken into the fold, made a believer. Oh. We make him such a believer, he loses his suspicions and does not object to signing over Sanders' fortune to his daughter. Precisely. We start Mr. Jackson's conversion to the faith with this. Hmm. A picture of Sanders. Right. Treat it with that luminous paint of yours and make it a spirit photo. Robbie, here can do an excellent imitation of Sanders' voice. We'll have a record made, and as soon as the Sanders girl comes in with Mr. Jackson, we'll have a little session. And the Sanders girl doesn't know we're using her, huh? 
Does a lamb know it's being led to slaughter? It uh, sounds good, but... Uh... There are no buts, Swami. Don't forget, I took you from a mitt camp in a carnival and set you up in the best spook set up in the country. You wouldn't want to go back to reading palms at a diamond throat, would you? Mr. Sanders promised he'd contact me as soon as he got the evidence he wanted, Cranston. Well, you know the rest. You say he said he was on the trail of a racket that was milking hundreds of gullible old men and women, Commissioner? Yes, Cranston. He sounded pretty bitter about it, almost as though it hit close to home. His wife, perhaps? No, his wife has been dead almost ten years. Oh. Any family at all? Uh, just a daughter, Consuelo. She have any idea who killed her father? Uh, if she has, we haven't been able to get it out of her. At any rate, we haven't pushed her too hard. Why not? Well, you see, the girl's been under the care of a psychiatrist for quite some time. You mean she... Uh, no, she's not crazy. It's just that according to her psychiatrist, uh, his name here someplace, oh, yes, Dr. Thor Sampson. According to him, she suffers from a psychic maladjustment. What does that mean? Well, it means about $10 of treatment. <laughs> <laughs> He's located on Park Street in a swanky apartment building. Anyway, we can help find Sanders' killer, Commissioner? No, no, no. Everything possible is being done for Pete's sake. Don't complicate it any more than it is. <laughs> okay. Come along, Margot. The commissioner sounds busy. <laughs> Goodbye, Margot. Cranston? Goodbye, Commissioner. See you soon. I don't think you fooled him either, Lamont. Whatever do you mean, mm -hmm. darling? Just that. Don't you think Weston knows that you're on your way to see the psychiatrist right now? Of course he does, the old faker. Otherwise, why do you think he'd go to such pains to make sure we got Dr. Samson's name and address? Pretty swanky layout, am I? Yes, it's... Someone's coming. Yes? Dr. Samson? Well, no, the doctor's busy. Do you have an appointment? I know. It's uh, not a case for the doctor. It's some information I'd like. Well, sorry, but the doctor... Brother, what is this? Don't we ask the people in? Well, they're just looking for information, Dr. Right, yes. Good. Won't you come in, please? Thank you, Doctor. Uh, my name is Cranston, Lamont Cranston. This is my friend, Miss Lane. I'm Dr. Samson. How do you do, Miss Lane? How do you do? And this information? It's in reference to the Sanders killing. Oh, yes. Unfortunate. Terribly unfortunate. I understand his daughter, Consuelo, is a patient of yours. Why, well, yes. I wanted to ask your advice before talking to her. How very strange. You know, Mr. Cranston, by the oddest coincidence, Consuelo is here in my office at this very moment. Oh? Uh, why not question her here, Mr. Cranston? Well, that would be splendid. Good. If you wait just a moment. Oh, Lamont, what a big man. He must weigh 300 pounds. And that servant of his... Wouldn't want him around very much. He's probably chauffeur and general handy boy. That's a nice setup. Here they come. Mm. Here you are, Cranston, as well as Anders. This is the man I told you about, my dear. How do you do? And this is his friend, his name. Oh, you're pretty. Thank you. Mr. Cranston wanted to ask you a few questions, my dear. What did you want to know, Mr. Cranston? You know your father is dead, don't you, Consuelo? Of course, Mr. Cranston, I know. Do you have any idea who might have killed him? Yes. What? It was Mother. She did it. She shot Father. But, Consuelo, your mother's been dead for over ten years. Yes, Mr. Cranston. You see, it, it's been a long time, and she's been so tired of waiting. Now, at last, they're together. Nobody ever dies. They are simply on another plane. I see. Were there any other questions you wanted to ask Consuelo, Mr. Cranston? Uh, no, Doctor. I think that'll be all. We'll be going. Goodbye, Mr. Cranston. Goodbye, Miss Lane. Goodbye. Goodbye. No wonder that girl's being treated by a psychiatrist. She's completely unbalanced. Maybe, Margot. Maybe she just believes in spirits. What? There's a growing cult that believes that the spirits of the dead are all around us. That through some mediums, it's possible to establish contact. Oh, that's spiritualism, isn't it? Yes, Mark. Spiritualism is often used as a racket which to prey on the rich and old. 
Do you think that's what Mr. Sanders was referring to when he told Weston he was out to break up a racket? May well be, Margot. At any rate, it's worth a try. Come on, we've got some investigating to do. This is Mr. Jackson, Swami, my father's lawyer. How do you do, Mr. Jackson? Come in, come in. Well, I must warn you, sir, that I'm being brought here under protest. If it weren't for Consuelo's insistent pleadings, I can promise you I wouldn't submit to this, this seance. I understand perfectly, Mr. Jackson. Now, if you will just sit over there on that side of the table, sir, and you, Consuelo, on this side, we will begin. Thank you, Swami. Now, Consuelo, you must concentrate, my child. Yes. You will be the medium through which I speak to your father. The medium through which I bring his image to you both. Concentrate, Consuelo. Concentrate. Father? Father, answer me. I see a horn and, and, and the light near the cabinet. Swami, look. Look, it's Father. Good heavens. My child. Oh. I have come at your call. I am with your mother at last. Someday soon, you will come to us. We will never be separated again. Never. Oh, Father, I was afraid you weren't happy. This is incredible. I must go now. But, Consuela, there is something. Yes? You must support the institution that makes it possible for me to come to you. Give. Give freely. I will, Father. I will give everything, everything. I must go now, my child. No. Goodbye. Father, come back. Oh. Oh, Consuelo, I, I hope everything went well. Uh, we made the contact? Yes, Swami, we made the contact. Ah. You are satisfied, Mr. Jackson? Uh, that's the most incredible thing I've ever seen. You are satisfied? Yes, I'm satisfied. Oh, the gun. Excuse me, I will be right back. You rang the gong, Robbie. What for? Yeah, the phone. Doc wants to talk to you. The girl and Jackson are in there. I do not have much time. Hello. Hello, Tommy. How did it go? Like clockwork. I gave them everything but the Battle of Iwo Jima and Technicolor. Oh, good. But you'll have to do more. The serious complication has developed. What now? The chap was questioning her about her father is Lamont Cranston, a dangerous man. We've got to take care of him, Swami. Now, wait a minute, Doc. That is your department. Let Robbie handle it. No. Cranston's too smart to let Robbie get close enough. The girl will have to do it. Consuelo? You're nuts. She won't do it. Yes, she will. I've conditioned her to hypnosis. You can put her under in a second. Get rid of Jackson. Then tell her exactly what she's to do and leave her with a post-hypnotic suggestion that later she will remember nothing. You sure this is okay, Doc? <laughs> Walk up to Cranston, let him and Miss Lane have it, then forget all about it. What could be sweeter and neater? We should come in for a minute, Lamont. Thanks, Margaret, but it's pretty late. I'll just see you to the door. Right. over there near the entrance. Isn't that Consuela Sandy? Yes, it looks like her. Do you think she's waiting for us? Hello, Consuela. Hello, Miss Lane. Hello, Mr. Cranston. Consuela, is anything wrong? You feel all right? I have something for you, Mr. Cranston. Something I must give you. Yes? What is it, Consuela? 
this, Mr. Cranston. It's a gun. I must kill you. Put away that gun, Consuelo. No, Mr. Cranston. Consuelo. Don't come any closer. Look out, Ramon. We'll return to the shadow in just a minute. All right, kids, ready for that thrilling offer from the makers of Kerry Salt. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Get Kerry's wonderful magic shadow ring while you still have a chance. You can have so much fun with a strange and fascinating ring that glows in the dark. Yes, it soaks up the living light and holds it. Then the darkness brings out its mysterious radiance. A steady, watchful glow like the unsleeping eye of a jungle cat. Now that everybody knows the offer will close next week, the rings will be going fast. So don't wait till it's too late. Here's how to get your magic shadow ring right away. Ask Mom for the white star from a round package of Kerry salt. Tell her you need it quickly because the offer is almost over. Then mail the white star along with five cents, just a nickel, to Kerry salt, Hutchison, Kansas. Or you can send the sales slip from any Kerry salt product and five cents. Print your name and address plainly. Your exciting magic shadow ring will come... Post pay. I'll repeat. Send five cents in coin with either that Kerry Salt White Star or the sales slip from any Kerry product to Kerry's, C A R E Y S, Kerry Salt, Hutchison, Kansas. Now back to the shadow. Lamont Cranston and Margot Lane are investigating the murder of wealthy Roger Sanders. They meet his daughter, Consuelo, who is under the spell of a pseudo-psychiatrist and spiritualist named Swami. In an attempt to get rid of Cranston, Swami hypnotizes Consuelo, instructs her to shoot Cranston. She meets Cranston in front of Margot's apartment, pulls out a gun, fires it. I wouldn't have been if you hadn't hit her arm just as she fired. Thanks, sir. Consuelo. She fainted, I think. Help me get into the lobby. There. She seemed in a complete daze, didn't she? Could she have been hypnotized? Mm -hmm. She's coming out of it, Mom. Uh, Oh, where am I? Mr. Cranston. Miss Lane, what am I doing here? You don't remember coming here, Consuelo? I know. It's all a blank, Mr. Cranston. I can't remember a thing. I remember seeing you this afternoon at Dr. Sanderson. You don't remember anything beyond that? No. Nothing. Oh, what's wrong with me, Mr. Cranston? What's wrong? You've been under a terrific strain. <laughs> Margot, why don't you take Consuelo upstairs and let her lie down? What are you going to do, Lamont? As to wish your Consuelo is safe, I think we'd better drop by headquarters and see what Commissioner Weston has to say. I tell you, Cranston, you're playing with dynamite. I suppose you know that hiding that girl makes you an accessory. I'm not hiding her, Commissioner. I put her someplace where she can rest. Rest? (laughs) That girl's an attempted murderess. For all we know, she may have killed her own father. She's crazy enough to. She's crazy, all right. Well, crazy or not, she tried to kill you, and I'm taking her in for it. Oh, really? Do you have any witnesses? Any complaints? Cranston, someday, sir, help me. Commissioner, all I ask is that you give me 24 hours. If I don't have something by then, I'll turn the girl over to you. Well, I'm going to hold you responsible for that girl. I'll accept the responsibility. Come on, Margo. Goodbye, Commissioner. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I hope you know what you've let yourself in for, Lamont. I think that girl can help me smash this racket, Margo. But how? She doesn't even remember anything. Not consciously, Margo. Maybe the shadow can decipher the secret from her unconscious mind. <laughs> the Swami's control spirit. No, Consuelo. I am the shadow. I want information about the Swami. You're trying to test me. 
You're here because the Swami sent you. You think I'm an unbeliever like my father. I'm not, I'm not. Father was an unbeliever? But he was one of the Swami's patrons, wasn't he? Yes, but the Swami couldn't convert, Father. He tried to, but, but he couldn't succeed. I see. This Swami, where can I find him, Consuelo? He's everywhere. Nowhere. Where is this Swami? Tell me, what is his address? On Forsyth Road, the old frame house on the corner of Nassau. What else do you command? Stay here, Consuelo. Shadow will return when he has done what must be done. Mon, are you sure we should do this? Suppose someone's here at this Swami. I doubt it, Margot. The place is dark. It doesn't look as though anyone lives in it during the day. The door's locked. Take care of it. I step in back. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. There must be a switch around here someplace. Oh, here it is. What was that? It sounded like... Wait. Consuelo, my child. You have come at last to your father. There's someone in this room, Lamont. Let's get... Look over there near the cabinet. A man. That, darling, is Mr. Sanders, if I'm not mistaken. Sanders? But he's dead. Get me out of here. Oh, wait a minute, Margot. Now, these are all tricks. What? Watch. I bring out the astral horn by pushing this button. The voice of the control spirit by pushing this one. Consuelo, my child. You have come at last to your father. All tricks, Margot. Cruel tricks designed to get money from the bereaved and the credulous. What? How do they work? The horn? Recorded. This is the imitation of the voice of Sanders. As for the picture, just treat it with luminous paint. When I push the button, the dark cloth in front of it falls away and it glows in the dark. Shh, Margo, someone's coming. Hide behind these drapers. There's one place I can't have too much light. Where's that switch? There. It's done. Hello, Robbie. What? So you work for the medium as well as for the doctor, eh? Quite so. I thought you were... Ed? Were... Sorry to disappoint you, Robbie. What do you want? Facts. The facts on what's behind all this. You can't make me talk. Maybe you'd better help me tie Robbie up, Margot. Those cords and the drapery should do it. Right. Uh, right. I warn you, Robbie, I'll shoot at the slightest resistance. <coughs> okay, darling? He won't get out of there. All right, now, Robbie. Now, where's the swami and what's his connection with Dr. Sampson? They're in cahoots. The doc gets the dope out of the suckers when they come to him. He passes it along to the swami and he uses it in the sand. What are you doing here? The doc figures things are getting too hot. They're pulling out. Swami sent me here to pack his stuff. What about the girl, Consuelo Sanders? I don't know. They got all they can out of her. All right, Margo, let's go. What are you going to do? First, make sure Consuelo's all right at your apartment. Then pay a visit to Doc Samson and a Swami. Uh, give me your apartment, please, Margo. You don't think anything's happened, Lamont? I don't know. Consuelo? Consuelo? Lamont, she isn't here. Huh, where can... There's a note on the table. Oh? What did she say? Thank you both for your help. I must leave. I feel a call. I cannot resist. Can they have that power over in Lamont? A power that makes it possible for them to will her to do things? Hmm. I think I finally got the answer, Margot. If I'm right, the shadow may still have time to prevent another murder. Consuelo, what are you doing here? I had to come, Swami. I felt your call. Nobody called you. Look, run along, Consuelo. No. Doc, and I have some important business we must... A voice told me to come to you, Swami. Please, Consuelo. Later on, perhaps. I want you to make a contact for me. Look, Consuelo. Nobody on this plane can make a contact. But you can, Swami. See, Swami? Now you can make the contact. You're no longer on this plane, are you? Good heaven, Consuelo. What have you done? What's the matter, Doc? 
I thought you didn't like the Swami. I don't. But you didn't have done it here. What am I going to do with him? Why not leave him here? Be reasonable, my child. Police. I wouldn't worry about the police, Dr. Sampson, because by the time they get here, you'll be with the Swami. What? Well, <laughs> don't be hasty, my dear. Just as soon as Jackson signs over your inheritance, we'll go away together. Oh, no, we won't, Doc. No, we won't. But... You see, you're the only one left who could tie me to this whole business and indirectly to the killing of my father. But uh, what can you gain by gain. killing me? Gain, gain. When the police find you, this gun will be alongside you. It's the same gun that killed my father. The police will put two and two together and You've then... You've forgotten the Swami, Consuelo. What, what? was that? Swami! <laughs> You're dead! I just killed you! Don't you remember, Consuelo? Many of our dear departed that we think are gone forever are always with us. It can't be true. But it is. <laughs> I'll kill you! I'll kill you! With an empty gun? No, Consuelo, you're not going to kill anyone else. Let go of me! Who, who are you? You're not Swami. I? I'm the shadow. I've come to see justice done. I have done nothing. We'll see about that, Dr. Sampson. We'll all stay here together and wait for the police. They'll be very interested in the story. You two will have to tell them. Well, Cranston, now will you listen to me? Just as I told you, that Sanders girl was behind the murder of her stepfather. Then he wasn't a real father, Commissioner? Oh, no, Margot. That's why she had to go to such lengths to get hold of the family fortune. First, she tried to interest her stepfather in the fake spiritualism and have the spirit of her mother demand that he change his will to her favor. Sanders became suspicious, thank you, Mr. Yes, in fact, he had enough evidence to expose the whole racket, so the girl had to kill him. And later, she tried to convert Jackson, the family lawyer, with another seance. They've all confessed? Oh, certainly, they're all inside testifying against each other. Uh, say, by the way, you know, we found the gunman, Robbie, all tied up waiting for us at the Swami's place. Now, I wonder how that could have happened. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's possible we might have been on the right track at that, Margot? <laughs> Farm friends, don't miss reading the important new carry booklet, Minerals on Your Livestock. It's free for the asking at all dealers who sell Carrie's Mineral Supplement Salt. This amazing booklet is helping hundreds of farmers make bigger profits from livestock. You see, Minerals and Your Livestock tells the shocking truth about mineral deficiency, the unseen danger that threatens all farm animals. More important, it tells how to fight mineral deficiency, give facts, figures, pictures. It's authoritative, it's practical. If your dealer doesn't have it, just put your name and address on a postcard, ask for Minerals and Your Livestock, and mail to Carry Salt, Hutchison, Kansas. This free booklet is a real help in safeguarding your stock from mineral deficiency. Another help, of course, is Gary's Mineral Supplement Salt. You just use it instead of ordinary block or loose salt. Mix with feed or supply at free choice. Either way, your stock gets extra amounts of valuable phosphorus, calcium, and iodine, and other minerals as they satisfy normal salt appetite. Remember the name, Gary's Mineral Supplement Salt. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that... The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, the Carry Salt Company brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. Don't miss it. And remember, only two weeks left to send for your magic shadow ring. Mail five cents in coin and either a Carry Table Salt White Star or the sales slip from any other Carry Salt product. Address Carry Salt, Hutchison, Kansas. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>